Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes, the next plane 11. For this flight I'm in a MiG-29. It's a freeware MiG-29 and it doesn't look entirely MiG-29-ish inside the cockpit but certainly looks better outside and we'll roll with it. Uh, I'm flying from Yuchitose Airport near Sapporo in Japan to Petropavlovsk, Petropavlovsk in Kamchatka in Russia of course. That's a 915 nautical mile journey so I'm really hoping that we can keep in uh, keep above the speed of sound so it doesn't take too long and of course I'm continuing to listen to the Apollo 13 audio with silences cut out and uh, they are still working on the CO2 problem along with other things so here we go pressing play on that there we go okay let's go Now, in the comments, people, whoa, this thing accelerates really fast. <laughs> um, people noted um, that it was a little bit sticky in previous videos. And that might have been because of the clouds or might be because of other reasons due to the way I was recording. So I've tried to change some settings. But we do still have the clouds. CSM stuff tomorrow, but uh, basically we we suspect that the uh, main bus be as good, and we're going to work up a procedure. That's an testing. interesting place they chose to put the drop okay, tank. I'm not too sure that's right. You think main bus be as good, don't you? That's mighty suspicious. That's a firm. Uh, we think it is, but we want to check it out. No, anyway. I'm pretty sure that's not where you put hey, we think you guys are the drop tank. And we're going really fast. Well, I don't think we have an emergency jettison button. Drop tank, maybe. Okay, I think we got rid of it. Yeah, we got rid of it. Okay, well, I'm gonna need to watch fuel then, huh? It was a pretty long trip and I just dumped the drop tank because it was unsightly. On this trip, the scenery will be less intense anyway because we're not flying yeah. over Tokyo or anything. I don't know if it's supposed to accelerate like this. Whoa, okay. That effect was not necessary. Apparently we have broken the sound barrier. I don't... I don't need that. <laughs> this is a little bit embarrassing. Okay, it goes away, thankfully. I 
think we may have. How is this working out? They are. How are we going to get in alignment? Well, I don't want the shock cone to come back, so let's just punch it. Okay, well, things look good enough. We seem to be consuming about a pound per second, a little bit less, maybe. So we have about 3,100 seconds, I mean a pound per second from each tank. But uh, it's looking like it's going to take more than an hour to get there at this speed. Gonna be tight. That's affirmative, Jim. Pull him out. TCA is open. Okay. I'm changing the get back again. First three rows. And you're including the Atka Pings, huh? That's affirmative. Pull Atka Pings open. Okay. Okay, are you ready for the fourth row? Upper. Okay, now and then when we get in the fourth row, we're going to open the IMU operate circuit breaker. And what that means is that we're going to lose the capability to watch your CDUs. So we're not going to be able to see your attitude. Therefore, we will not be able to advise you on which antenna to select for communications. The way we want you to handle that is to turn the LEM uplink squelch off and uh, when you hear the noise, switch antennas. We'll be able to uh, see you switch antennas and it's going to take us about three to five minutes to establish a lock on again after you switch. Uh, that communication situation sounds like a mess. We will initiate a voice it's very hard to trim this thing right now. Uh, basically, uh, when you see the earth out the window, you can be on the forward antenna. And when the moon's out in the window, use the aft antenna. You copy? That's Jack Lausma now in the uh, capsule communicator position. We're going to pull the IMU operating circuit breakers. You won't be able to see our attitude. Therefore, you won't tell us how to uh, switch antennas, and uh, we'll enable the. Uh, I will turn up uh, the uh, squelch off so that when we start getting static, we'll switch antennas. And as a uh, sub rule, we could use with the Earth forward, we use the forward antenna. And when we see the bird, we use the aft antenna. That's a 
affirmative, Jim. Uh, in other words, uh, we're leaving antenna switching up to you. And uh, after you switch antennas, it's going to take three to five minutes for us to establish a lock on again, and we'll initiate a voice check. And uh, I'm ready to go on uh, panel 11, row four. We are still over Hokkaido right now, but we will soon run out of Hokkaido. Okay, on row four. Under heaters, RCS system. And then there's the Kuril Islands, I believe. Leading us to Kamchatka. Under ECS, the only change is under glycol pumps, close auto transfer. Under COM, the only change is open VHFA receiver, open commander audio. Under pings, the only change is close and leave closed IMU standby circuit breaker so we can have heaters. Readback. Okay, on uh, row four, we're going to open all four of the uh, heaters of the RCS system and me, the first four circuit breakers. Uh, we're going to close the auto transfer. We're going to open the VHFA receiver and the commander audio. And uh, we're going to uh, close the uh, IMU standby. Uh, well, let's see how bad it would be to turn on the afterburners here. How much the consu fuel consumption goes up quite by quite a lot. And on row five, the only change is that we want you to under EPS open SNC like about control. Over. Two pounds per second from each tank. Probably not good to keep those on. System B, open, PQGS displays, over. Okay, let me go over this with you, uh, Jack, because uh, this uh, checklist has been ripped over two or three times now in our various uh, procedures. Top row, uh, the first two are open, the next three are closed. And uh, we're going to open now the uh, quad PCAs, one, two, three, four. Uh, cross beam will be closed. And the uh, temp pressure uh, display flags will be open, and we're going to open up the PQGS. Beam size will be closed, and all the other three will be open. That's affirmative, Jim. And uh, there's no change to the second row, over. Okay, we're at the north coast of Hokkaido. Uh, how about the ceiling? Is that uh, going to be closed? 
That's affirmative, Jim. We want the next five closed. Okay. Okay, in the third row, under comm. Displays open. SE audio closed. VHFA transmitter open. That's a change. VHFB receiver open. Still hard to trim it to keep it at an altitude. It just open. doesn't trim very well right now. S-band antenna open. PMP closed. TV open. Under ECS displays open. Glycol pump secondary open. LGC pump open. Cabin fan control open. Cabin repress closed. And all the next four closed also. Uh, read back. Okay, we have displays open, SE audio closed, VHMA uh, transmitter open, VHMB receiver open, power amp's going to be open, transmitter receiver closed, S-band antenna open, BMP closed, TV open, display is open, next three are open, cabin repress closed, and all the rest closed. That's affirmative, Jim, and in row four, under heaters, we want them all whoa, 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 it's going up really fast. We want all the quad heaters open. Correction. We want all the quad heaters closed. All the we want displays open. S-band antenna closed to avoid a master alarm. Camera, sequence camera open. And under EPS. We want displays open, DC bus bolt closed, inverter two open, SNECA closed, SNECA control open, descent ECA closed, descent ECA control closed, transmitter bus tie closed. We want the cross tie bus open, the bell loads closed. Bat feed ties closed. How do you read? Okay, the four RCS uh, ears will be closed. Display is open. There's been antenna closed. Camera sequence will be open. Display uh, will be open. DC bus bolt will be closed. Inverter 2 open. Asset ECA will be closed, but the asset ECA control open. Decent ECA closed. So this island below us is Kunashir Island. Oh, we're going down really fast. Switches in the rear stats, over. Okay, we don't need the floodlights, I don't think. Uh, but uh, we can do it that way, I guess. And uh, we haven't used it. under uh, row four, under RCS system A and B dash two quad heaters, you notice that we've uh, closed those circuit breakers, but what we want you to do is to on uh, Panel three, turn the RCS AB dash two quad switches one, two, three, and four off. Over. Next island is Itarup. Um, we're not quite over it yet. And, uh, we're going to watch your uh, quad temps for you. Somewhere below the clouds, to, uh, it's in view, bit, though. We'll to, uh, throw those four switches on on panel three.
Okay, Jim, as far as we can tell right now, the PTC uh, looks as good as any PTC we've ever seen in the CSM, so we're going to go with what we've got. Okay. Okay, and if you turn over the page in Power 8, uh, we have the uh, spacecraft functions remaining to you. We've got low bit rate TM. However, we don't have any VHF. We have seaweed, we have glycol pumps, we have suit fans, we have cabin repress for you, and uh, standby and attitude control here. Okay, in uh, attitude control, we'll have hard overs for use as an emergency, and uh, for no more usage, we want to have a 15-minute delay to get the heaters on to warm them up before use. How do you read? Okay, for emergency, we have the uh, hard overs, and uh, for normal use, requires a 15-minute request to get the heaters on. That's affirmative. Okay, Jim, that uh, concludes our power down procedure. Or we're waiting for you to get with it. Okay, Jack, we'll start. I sure hate to lose the thing. I sure hope that procedure for the mid course is a good one. It is. Yeah, it just doesn't want to stay at a particular altitude. That is Isroop Island below us. Okay, Jim, on uh, the four quad heater breakers, uh, we want you to leave them closed. And we'll operate the heaters with the uh, switches on panel three, over. Okay. to get to bed and get Fred up. 
Brief good view because the clouds reset. Not the nicest new first for them. Next island will be Urup Island, but okay, uh, we are still we over Itrup. Uh, one more hour on the primary cartridge and uh, six or seven hours on the secondary. Okay, fine. I am sort of nervous about our fuel situation. We're not halfway through the flight yet. Well, it's tough to say because my map is one of those weird projections that skews the higher latitudes. Um, so maybe we're close to halfway through, maybe we're not quite there yet. This is Apollo Control at 82 hours, 30 minutes. Here in Mission Control at this time, we're in the process of completing a shift change. Flight Director Milton Wendler and his uh, maroon team of flight controllers replacing Flight Director Gene Kranz and the white team. Uh, on board the spacecraft, uh, the flight plan calls for the uh, two of the crewmen, uh, Commander Jim Lovell and Command Module Pilot Jack Swigert to begin a uh, five-hour rest period shortly. All three crewmen are scheduled to be uh, eating uh, at this time or uh, to have uh, finished by now. The lunar module has been essentially powered down and at the present time you know, we're showing a total current uh, on the lunar module. Uh, ranging between 14 and uh, 15 or 16 amps, which is about what was expected. Aquarius Houston. Okay. 
Aquarius Houston, over. Right, go ahead, Jack. Roger, uh, for your information, You're Jack, right, uh, all of our uh, analysis is based on uh, power down to 14 amps, but uh, we're reading on you right now 12.3, and so we're better off than we were uh, in our analysis. That sounds good. Jack, I thought you were going to get the sleep shift where there wasn't any excitement. Well, I tried, but I didn't make it. <laughs> I thought you are supposed to be sleeping now. So, uh, Fredo is uh, getting something to eat, and the gym is uh, starting to stack out, so I'm taking the con here until Fred gets done. Okay. Jack Swigert reporting that uh, Jim Lovell at the present time is resting. Uh, Fred Hayes is getting something to eat. And when he, when Fred finishes eating, uh, uh, Jack Swigert is scheduled to get a bit of rest. Fred, I just, uh, are you ready to take over? Oh, I think that's the end of that tape. New tape. Okay, uh, expecting about 500 nautical miles left. So a little bit more than half an hour. Feels still pretty tight from the look of it. Make it astronaut proof. Antenna, when you see the moon, use the app one. Don't know if that's quite astronaut proof. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Okay, I see the Earth, so I. But I think what they meant was to keep it simple. Okay. 
seeing the venting or is it uh, zeroed out now? some new venting or is this uh, venting that you just uh, hadn't uh, that's been going on all the time but which you hadn't looked at recently several and uh, we want to tell you uh, something that I told Jim earlier and uh, that concerns control uh, right now you have uh, control in the uh, okay okay plane but when we go to some yeah this one has been a little bit fidgety the, uh, the quad heaters off we want to have a 15 minute uh, notice for a attitude control request over Except for the dips propellant, and we're watching dips is the descent propulsion system on the lunar module. Okay, uh, that's, that's very good, Jack. You're watching them, uh, that's good enough. And uh, everybody's fine at home now, Lago. And 
uh, Fred, your uh, CO2 is building up. Uh, it's at 11.3 on our gauge, and uh, we've got a medical go up to 15 millimeters, at which time we'll switch over to secondary. Looks like uh, we've got plenty of lithium hydroxide, about 192 hours, including the uh, CSM. We've only got some small uh, islands in and, this uh, vicinity. You know, we've got a uh, way to use those, and uh, as soon as we get it written down in some uh, good words, why, uh, we'll pass that along. You might be able to make one. Okay. Yeah, we'll sure give her a try. And I'm showing on board about uh, 12 and a half uh, millimeters of uh, mercury. Roger, and uh, I have a, a flight plan update. Uh, when you get a time to copy it sometime, we'll pass it along. Uh, there's no hurry on it. Okay, stand by one, Jack. Uh, back down. Sure, it's a service module, and of course, the thing we're interested in knowing is it uh, something that uh, is residual from before, or is it uh, something new? And if you have any ideas about that, why uh, we'd sure like to have them. Of course, during these flights, I'm not using autopilot, but I'll tell you, right about now, wing leveler would be great. Something to uh, dampen out the roll would be a good thing. And the pitch. The elevator trim is not good enough to keep it steady right now. Okay, Fred, uh, we're not going to uh, bother the skipper up there. We won't be taking any pictures out of the uh, command module window until after rest period. Okay. Uh, 
This is Apollo Control at 83 hours, two minutes. Uh, Fred Hayes has the watch at the present time in the command mod, or in the lunar module, rather, uh, while Jim Lovell and uh, Jack Swigert attempt to get some rest in the command module. Uh, the flight plan calls for a five-hour rest period for both the commander and the command module pilot. Uh, recapping briefly, uh, Fred Hayes remarks, after coming back to the LEM from the command module where he'd been getting something to eat, Fred reported that uh, he'd observed some venting apparently from the service module and had also seen a four inch square piece of metal, which he described as silver in color, float by the window of the command module. He was looking out the number one window, which is the uh, viewed from inside the uh, command module is the window uh, to the left of the commander's couch, uh, the far left window. Uh, Hayes was asked if he felt the uh, venting was something new or if it was residual yep. venting from the original event which had uh, caused the loss of power and oxygen to the service module. Uh, he did not know and we also uh, have not determined uh, here on the ground uh, whether it is whether uh, this to figure out what island this is right uh, next to us the one for along to the left is called Ekarma and then there's an Ekarm Strait uh, the waterway between this island right next to us and the next one in front of us is called Severn Strait but I'm not seeing a name on this island. Flight Director uh, Milton Wendler, after uh, reviewing not the seeing a name on the next island either. Until after the uh, commander Jim Lovell and command module pilot Jack Swigert had completed their rest period before attempting to get back into the command module and uh, photograph. The, uh, the venting and whatever uh, pieces might be visible out the window. This is Apollo Control at 83 hours, 11 minutes. A change of shift press briefing is being planned uh, to begin in about 10 minutes at 12.35 uh, a.m. in the main auditorium at the Houston News Center. Uh, the participants in the press conference will be flight team flight director Gene Kranz and astronaut Tony England. And repeating the time for that change of ship briefing is tentatively planned for 12.35 a.m. about 10 minutes from now. Okay, Fred, uh, for your information, your CO2 reading on board is a little higher than what we're reading here on the ground. And so when it gets to 15 on your meter, switch to secondary. And uh, we'd like to get a status uh, about every 30 minutes. We'll give you a call on that. Uh, but uh, just to let us know we're still thinking about you, we'd like you to go my biomed right, please. Okay, going uh, biomed uh, right. This sound in front of us is apparently called, and I'm not going to pronounce this properly, Ozero Koltsevoy. Five square, Fred, help me. Koltsevoy. Nice one, though, if one of those volcanic calderas that have an island in the middle. Well, not quite in the middle, but you got the picture. Always fancy. My CO2 reading is now uh, 12.13. Say again what it is. Oh, just uh, close below uh, 13. Okay, just below 13. And uh, just for your information, uh, we've got uh, people working on uh, several subjects. We're working on the uh, mid-course coming up, determine uh, 
our control system and uh, how to do it with the control system. We uh, select what we should do about the alignment. We've got the LMS and uh, a couple of crews cranked up working on that. And uh, we're also working on our entry, how and when we ought to uh, activate the CSM. And uh, we're working on the CSM systems uh, status. Uh, tomorrow sometime we're going to uh, have a main bus B checkout. So uh, we've got a lot of people uh, swinging pretty hard here. And I've got some uh, f-stop settings for you for the uh, lunar surface camera. At uh, one two hundred. Next island, uh, well, like next pair of islands will be the last ones before we uh, hit uh, Kamchatka. We don't know exactly which one is going to work the best, so we use four, five, six, and eight, and one two fiftieth with a surface camera. Copy. Okay, use the surface camera. Uh, We are still sort of cutting it close on the fuel. <laughs> Reminiscent of the MiG-15 flight. Okay, how do you read down, Jack? That's a lot better, Fred. Okay, I just said uh, the moon is uh, still so uh, bright that I think uh, probably the higher range rest up uh, will be better. Uh, F-8, uh, maybe even F-11. Okay. Okay, I'm uh, reading on my monitor here, Fred, that you're uh, 16,214 miles away from the moon, moving at uh, about 4,500 feet a sec. Not too sure. I've got a Russian name for this island in front of me, but I don't know how to okay. pronounce it. And no English name. We're about 200 nautical miles from our landing site. There is a town on this island called Severo Kurilis. Good. 
good. And uh, we want to ask you another question about the venting. Uh, is this, uh, would you uh, suppose, some new venting, or is this uh, venting that you just uh, hadn't, uh, that's been going on all the time, but which you hadn't looked at recently? I think we heard this conversation already. Okay, yeah, we heard that before. So, and, uh, again, your, uh, the multiple tapes. Up, uh, it's at 11.3 on our gauge, and uh, we've got a medical go up to 15 millimeters, at which time we'll switch over to secondary. Sometimes and, uh, the tapes overlap. You think it's practical. Uh, we're ready to give you some, uh, or we're working on some camera settings for pictures. Of, yeah, I got uh, those. And, uh, we're not going to... Uh, bother the skipper up there. We won't be taking any pictures Heard out of the uh, module window until I This is Apollo Control at 83 hours, 11 minutes. A change of shift press briefing is being planned well, we're a little bit uh, low. to begin in about 10 minutes at 12.35 uh, a.m. in the main auditorium at the Houston News Center. Uh, the participants in the press conference will be White team flight director Gene Kranz and astronaut Tony England. And repeating the time for that change of ship briefing is tentatively planned for 12.35 a.m., about 10 minutes from now. Okay, Fred, uh, for your information, your CO2 reading on board is a little higher than what we're reading here on the ground. Okay, so heard like that. Still here, Fred. How's it going? Okay. Uh, my uh, CO2 reading is now uh, is 13. Say again what it is. Oh, just, uh, okay. This in front of us is Kamchatka. Got those. Well, we've got a lot of people uh, swinging pretty hard here, and I've got some uh, f-stop settings for you for the uh, lunar surface camera. I guess we'll just proceed from here. At uh, 1 250th, we'd like you to take targets of opportunity. Each picture uh, use three f-stops because we don't know exactly which one is going to work the best. So we uh, use four. Five, six, and eight at one two fiftieth with a surface camera. Copy. So by request, next flight is going to be an AN two twenty five from Petropavlovsk to um, well, someplace in Alaska, probably the Aleutian Islands. Still a pretty long flight, nine hundred ninety three nautical miles. The target airport is P-A-A-K, I don't remember the name of the place. Uh, but it was originally supposed to be a Panavia Tornado, a uh, Pewer one at that. Uh, but somebody asked for an AN-225 and I thought this would be the best place for it. And there's a recent uh, release of a freeware AN-225 that I might as well try out. A little bit choppy right now. That's a lot better, Fred. Yeah, just that uh, the moon is uh, still so uh, bright that I think uh, probably the higher range rest stop uh, will be better. Uh, F8, uh, maybe even F11. Okay. Yeah, we heard that part already, but we shouldn't be too far off from where we 
ended up. Okay, I'm uh, reading on my monitor here, Fred, that you're uh, 16,214 miles away from the moon, moving at uh, about 4,500 feet a sec. Not quite on our map yet here. Our target airport, I mean. Well, we've got a bad patch of scenery up ahead there. Hopefully, well, I mean, that does yeah, signify that that's the start uh, of the photo, be, uh, photo scenery uh, again. We've been all over default scenery uh, so far. Right Hopefully, uh, it shapes up better than that patch indicates. Right, and uh, we're working on uh, procedures for that. Uh, Ken's been doing quite a bit of work on... Uh, I think I'll throttle down it. now. We're about a hundred miles away. Okay, just fine. Okay, uh, we're considering a uh, mid-course correction at 104 hours, uh, about 20 hours from now, 18 hours from now, and it's only seven feet per second. Uh, the other option is to uh, keep PTC up, since uh, we may not be able to get back into it again. And uh, delay it. So uh, that's the type of thing we're uh, thinking about. But uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, you're pretty much uh, right in the middle of the fairway there. And uh, our present tracking uh, with no mid course uh, has you uh, with a gamma of 7.11 as opposed to 6.51. So you're already in the corridor. You're just a half a degree uh, between the center and the outer limit. And we're going to tweak that up. Okay, that uh, sounds good. And uh, we don't, uh, we think there might have been a misunderstanding earlier on uh, potable water. Uh, don't worry about drinking water, drink all you want. There's plenty of it, there's 38 pounds. And uh, the surgeon recommends that uh, you uh, use some of the uh, fruit juices as well, over. Okay, uh, yeah, we went up and, uh, and A little bit uh, choppy now. Oh, right I, uh, I think it's a little bit better. Uh, yeah. It was loading something. The eastern edges of those peninsulas seem to be okay. bad off on the scenery. Overall, this doesn't seem particularly well done here. And uh, I assume that Jack is up there sleeping now too, right? Yeah, that's fun. Uh, that's all fun. Oh, oh, I didn't want to see that again. Uh, we might not have a choice. Let's just break below the speed of sound. Oh, lift. Exactly, but I think our uh, PTC is uh, 
Okay, there's our airport, UHPP, not that one. What we're going to do oh. is, we're going to have to make at least two up, and use two at a time. One on each set of hoses. What we'll do is we'll connect uh, one of these jury-rigged boxes to the red fittings and the air will be sucked through the lithium hydroxide and uh, then blown out the blue fitting. And uh, we're also going to, when we do this, remove the uh, LEM lithium hydroxide canister from the suit loop, uh, either the primary or the secondary. And uh, we're getting the words together uh, to make it easy to build one of these things. And it looks like it probably take two guys, so uh, I think we probably ought to plan to do that later. In addition, we have to uh, go up and get a couple of canisters out of the uh, command module, so it looks like maybe a smart idea would be to delay a little bit and uh, have you build a couple of these later on. What do you think? Yeah, I, yeah, I agree, Jack. Uh, um, Jack Swagger and I went upstairs earlier and broke out a canister and we were scratching around for some material to think about using. And uh, that's actually why we made up all the water drinks, but we needed the uh, plastic container that they were housed in the pantry. And uh, we had that uh, ready to use uh, for some material plus uh, we got some pretty uh, good material to use for some of our uh, bags that we had here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jack. Uh, yeah, we have to make sure that we get the uh, material that we need to do that. Yeah. Yeah, this is all pretty bad. I'll get uh, the photo scenery from a different source, I guess. This is uh, fairly commonplace to land on a normal trip around the world, so would like to have it looking proper. Those mountains in the background look good, though. Flight data file, timeline book, or uh, something like that. The tall one is uh, practically Mount Fuji-like. We can make this uh, jury-rigged canister. So the bag that we're looking for is the one that is right next to the liquid-cooled garment. And uh, if we're very careful about uh, where we cut it, we can make a pretty good rig. Okay. Looks like we'll have to uh, use that bag over again, though, because we only got two of them. And Let's see, do we have air brake? Yeah. Whoa, it causes a lot of drag. Or they cause a lot of drag, I should say. Deploys all of them at once, but there is actually two settings, geez. There's serious breaking and really serious breaking. Communication site. It's going to take us about a minute or so to reestablish uplink, so you can be prepared for that. I can't even pull up when all the air brakes are open. Oof.
Okay, let's go into the cockpit. That what that is? Well, it looks about right. Yeah, that mountain looks good. Now I see the airport. No comment. Oh, good point. <laughs> if I was him, I'd make you sign out everything you ate so I'd know. I think it's giving me a fuel warning. Yeah, fuel quantity. Oh, yeah, that's fair. I'm surprised it didn't give me a fuel quantity warning earlier. Good, let's uh, see if it goes the other way. Or maybe that was just the outer marker or something. Okay, I need to get the landing gear down. Okay. More air brake. But the way it plunges when the speed brakes are out, I just can't deal with very well. I can't pull up when it's out. Fred Hayes, who is on duty. That's somewhat inconvenient, isn't it? Uh, who's on duty in the uh, command module? Uh, in the uh, lunar module, rather. And uh, <laughs> look at our fuel. Uh, recap for you some of the things that uh, were discussed uh, during that period of time. Uh, Bit of flaps. I also advised Hayes that the mid-course correction being considered at this time is a seven foot per second maneuver which would occur at 104 hours oh we got reversers that's nice uh, the other option which uh, sometime when you're not too busy chewing on that uh, beef how about telling us what the co2 reads uh, oh we're out of fuel like <laughs> All right, well, we'll have to get a tow truck out to the runway here. Second time during these 80 flights that I have, uh, have managed to land just as I was running out of fuel. To, uh, delay the mid uh, let me let him talk. We're done, it would not be necessary to uh, stop the passive thermal control mode, which the lunar module is in at this time. Uh, and that is being considered, but no decision has been made. Okay, I'll pause it right there. There's a sufficient pause. And, well, here we are in Petropavlovitsk. And I'll be headed to Alaska next time. And I would expect that that'd be an AN-225. So, well, at least we made it. 
So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.